Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Alec here from Easy Going Outdoors. And in this video clip today, what I want to show you is my tripod setup. I've got it here. And I like my tripod to do multiple tasks. And the way I've got it set up at the moment is actually so I can hang on my tools and my rucksack using these toggles. So here I've cut three poles, approximately six feet in length. And this is ideal for my purposes, as I'm really only in this camp myself and a couple of friends occasionally. So I don't need my tripod to be very large. But if you work with groups, say, of numbers up to 10 and above, I suggest that you cut your poles anywhere from six feet up to 12 feet. And the reason behind that is so you can place over the fire, which will be much larger because you are cooking for more people and it gives you a bit more leeway for hanging equipment on your tripod and using it for other utility purposes if it's larger it's just a bit more awkward to move about but you have the group there to help you once you've got your poles cut to a relative size strip the poles off of any small branches and clear them it just makes it more convenient when it comes to actually building the tripod and stops you getting jagged with any of these small branches sticking off to the side. So just clear it off with your machete or whatever you have to hand, maybe an axe. So once you've stripped the poles, any small branches or debris that is sticking to them, what I like to do next then is sharpen off the ends of the pole. And I'll just show you here. Come down and sharpen it just like that. Just put a rough a spear point on it and it's just so you can secure it easier into the mud or the ground I find this works really well and it's self-supporting just simply by having the poles sharpened so here's the top of the tripod where the three legs meet I've just wrapped it around several times here with some string that I had left over on a spool usually I just do uh, a loop and twist it over on itself and what that does is saves a lot of paracord or bank line but as I said this was the end of a spool so I just wrapped it around several times doesn't really matter as long as you know it's secure by sticking the legs in the ground with the spear bottom you've done on the bottom of the shaft that'll hold fine if you're into your fancy knots, well, go ahead and do all your fancy wraps. But this is for everybody. This is something your kids could do. Nothing mystical about it. Just wrap it plenty. The next thing I like to do then is put various number seven notches into the poles. You can do that while they're on the ground. And you can also, if you've got a back or so, do it while it's freestanding like this one here. And here is the notch and what that simply is for is to hang your toggles from like this one here and all you do is make a simple loop and jam it in this notch and i'll show you that how that works a piece of bank line or paracord string whatever you have and make myself an overhand knot or a double overhand knot and create a loop like this as you can see, I'll put that around here. Like that. So it acts like almost like a lasso. Right, and do as many of them as you need for equipment, uh, hanging points on the poles of your tripod. So that's all it is. Put the bank line. Overhand knot, create a loop, feed it through it. The next thing I do then is get myself some small branches, chamfer off the ends, make myself a small groove all the way around. Like that. And what that does is just allows the loop to bite in more positive and keeps it in the centre of your uh, toggle so this is it hanging on the toggle and that little groove 
just keeps it in the center. And next thing we do then is we just wrap it around one of the poles of your tripod. Take your bank line, wrap it around the pole at the level of your number seven notch and fit it into the groove that you've created. And then feed it through itself after we do this while on the camera. And you can see the bank line fits into that nice ledge you've created with the number seven notch and makes it nice and secure. And you can do multiple notches all the way down the shaft of the pole. And you can see I've got three or four various hanging points here on the tripod. And you just put in as many as you require and the bank line can be at various lengths so it makes it easier to pull out and fit stuff on and have some short ones like this one here. So that's what I like to do as one of the tasks for my tripod. The next thing I like to do then is cut a few grooves in the poles where I can secure a loop around again to put my crossbars on this time and I do that in various points on the shaft of the tripod. The tripod here. So my first pole's got to go from here across to here. And all that little ledge does is gives a secure point to tie the bank link to. So as you can see here, what I've done now is put one of the crossbars in at the required level that I'd like to have it at. And I'll just show you where we've tied it off using those little grooves I cut out in the back. And you can see how the bank line just sits there nice and secure and prevents it from sliding down. Okay. You can also put this bar to the inside if you like. So it makes this tripod, if you like, to be mobile. Just untie it. And um, I'll show you that here. So the way I've got it set up, quick release knot here, just untie it like that, and it's easy enough to take off. Right, so that's how that would work. Right, so if you decide that your tripod is going to be more of a permanent fixture, you can cut like square notches into the shafts of the tripod and your crossbar and secure it that way. I like mine so I can actually lift it on and off the fire, move it about the camp as it's more convenient for me, the type of stuff that I do out here. So I'll show you what I do next, is usually add on a few of my hanging toggles to the here. And you can cut grooves into the wood just like I showed you, but I actually prefer it this way so you can slide it up and down the wood and put it where you like just by slackening off the toggle or the loop. And I'll show you how strong it is. What I'll do next, I'll need to put the camera down, is hang my bergen from it. My bergen I would say weighs about 25 kilos, maybe a bit more. Right, so there it is, free hanging on the toggle. I say it's roughly about 25 kilos, I would say it's in it at the moment. It can take a lot more. All you have to do is splay out the legs, if this is what you want it for. This is what I use for my tools, my rucksack, just to keep it up off the ground. Especially if it's snowing, I like to use it like this. And this is just one of the uses I use the tripod for. The other use obviously is for cooking. And if you put the crossbar round the three, poles that would give you a platform where you could use as a signal fire if you place some more wood across the crossbars and then stuff the center of it and that's another use another one you can use it as a drying rack you can hang your clothes on it or a drying rack for hanging meat from and fish 
and smoking it over the fire. There's just so many uses and I think it's a great piece of kit. It's not very difficult to make. Your kids can make this. Don't get too wrapped up in the fancy knots. If you can't do knots, just do plenty of them until it secures it. There's nothing mystical about this. This is for everybody. I'm sure you can cut down three poles and three crossbars. This is just one I've put on. And I'm sure you'll come up with loads of ideas yourself. Another thing I like to do is hang my jacket uh, from the top of the poles. And this allows it to dry out as well over the fire for drying my clothes. Especially on the large tripod, if it's say a 12 foot bar. I like to do that. Another thing you can do is throw the ponchos over the top of it or your tarp, bivy, whatever you call it. And create yourself an emergency shelter as well so there you go free hanging no problem so this will definitely take all your pots and your food and your fire grills when it comes to hanging it over the fire so here i have the tripod set up the way i like it and this crossbar here is slightly larger because i like to hang my pots off the end of it when they're not in use and here I've got my grill sitting basically in the position where my fire would be hanging on the chain all the way up onto the toggle you can just put it through the loop if you like and I've got another toggle here with a chain on it and I can put my grill plate on that over the fire once I'm ready and get it set up. So this is a useful tool to have. If you put loads of crossbars across from here to here and then fill up this gap here with tinder and then cover the top of it with say boughs or ferns, it give you a fire signal for alerting the Rescue services, obviously you'd want three and spaced it properly, but this is what I'm using it for today, nice wee project to do, why don't you and the kids get out and give it a shot, I think they would love it, got a couple of marshmallows on it on the fire once it's up and going, another thing I have to say to you is as this end here doesn't have a bar and I like one end to be open so I can get in and out of the fire and this bar here is removable, I haven't attached it so it moves back and forth so it gives me easier access to the fire because this side is open I've just found that more convenient because if you have the bar across the position I had it sitting there like that what I find is you keep hitting your head off it as you go going to put say more wood onto your fire down here and I just found it going away so I prefer to have this bar so it's movable it's just a wee tip for you that I've come across over the years That's the coffee on. This is a fantastic wee project that you can get the kids involved in. Nice and simple for them to do, just get them supervised at all the time. There we go, that's how simple it is. Right, so I'll go and get some lunch on and I'll catch you all in my next video. Hopefully this is a bit of help to you. Catch you all soon. Cheers.